Oh, perfect. perfect. That is perfect. Yeah, they're only, they're are, we, are we rolling now? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to make foam cake. We're going to make angel food cake. Okay, I have your recipe on Schoology for you in the cake folder, which has a foam cake folder then. You will need your KitchenAid. You will need the wire whisk attachment for the whole thing. Okay, you will need, it says, 12 eggs whites or one and a half cup of egg whites and it will take the 12 okay so make sure that you separate your egg from the whites your yolks from the whites do it one at a time because you don't want to get the yolk in with the whites so be careful with it hi Oh, you're in trouble. Uh, not in trouble. Oh, my teacher said that means I'm not in trouble. Okay. Let's focus. All right, so you're going to have to keep doing this. Uh, make sure that you have two bowls to break over. We're going to save the yolks. I haven't a clue what we're going to do with the yolks yet. But we will save them. We'll do something. Okay? Make sure that you empty in between eggs. If you get yolk in with the whites, it will not beat up and have stiff peaks like we need. Even the littlest bit? Even the littlest bit because it's adding a fat. Can we chew that out? Huh? Do eggs expire? You can try your best. Do eggs expire? Yes, they do. Okay. Okay, uh, what they do is as they expire, uh -huh. the. Um, I do see something I don't want to see in there. Is it a chef? Yep, I thought at first it was the chalice, but no, it looks like it's the, uh, or the shell. shell. Okay, the, um, when they expire, what happens is the yolks start to spread out instead of being high and puffy. Oh, okay. And the whites get really, really runny. So you don't want that. So you need fresh eggs. Okay, depending on who you watch for video or cooking shows, some cooking shows will tell you that your eggs should be room temp to get maximum air into it. And some will say everything needs to be chilled to make the meringue. Because the, that's the first thing that we're doing is making a meringue. Okay, I have done it both ways. And I get the same results. So I think it's all a matter of how you add your ingredients and how long you beat it. How many do you need? Twelve. Twelve eggs? Twelve eggs. That's a lot of chicken. Okay, so somebody is going to have to do this. While someone is doing this, somebody else could be measuring out all the other ingredients. Did anybody else add? <laughs> huh? No? Okay. Ooh, we can make scrambled eggs. Uh, ooh, that would just be all yolk egg. I'm okay with it. You're okay with it? Well, we'll see. Ooh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least that's probably one egg with a uh, bite in it. Okay, so I'm almost finished. Ooh, you can make pasta. We could. But yeah, you're still thinking of food you can make. I have but some good ideas. We don't have pasta and specialty foods. Uh, you, what about for, you can give it? You can give the yolks to foreign foods. Foreign foods isn't until spring. Really? Really? Yeah, that's what that's what I do. That's what I do. I've been scoring. Take it. Take them home and then make pasta. There you go. Take them home and then make pasta. All right, here we go. Oh my. Still good? I wonder if any of them work. All right, so we have our 12 egg whites, which is roughly one and a half cups. Make sure you lock it. Oh, those are cheese for a minute. And we're going to start slow, and we're going to move it to fast. And what we're going to do is add our 
cream of tartar. Okay, and what the cream of tartar does is it acts as a stabilizer. Hi. And it helps capture those air bubbles. It also adds a bright white color to the angel blue cake. Can I help you with something? Oh, I just wanted to say um, that they were awesome on Friday. Okay. So can you give everybody a colonial pass for me? Well. Woo! Okay, I'm going to check it real quick. And I want to see if it holds stiff peaks. Okay. I Another thing that I can do to check is I can cut a trench. Does it hold its shape, the trench, or does it fill in? It holds its shape. It holds its shape. Another thing I can do is, please let it work. Blizzard. Oh, yeah. Put it over my head and I'll pull it fall off and get me. Okay, if it stays in the, in the bowl, it's done. If it falls down on your head, it's not done. I'm going to do that one. No, you're not, because I won't give you 12 more eggs. 
That's a lot of eggs to waste if it's not. But you can see it's stiff peaks, right? So that's my meringue. Okay. So while someone was beating that, another person could have two pieces of wax paper. Okay, it asks for cake flour. This is a light, airy cake, so we need cake flour for this. So what I have in here is one cup of flour minus one tablespoon. I have, hang on, I have my one tablespoon of cornstarch. Remember when we made our own cake flour? No. I have that. So that replaces that one tablespoon of flour that I took out. And then it takes one and a half cups of powdered sugar yet. And you're gonna sift this all together. Okay, remember this is a light and airy cake, so we want these particles really fine. So we're gonna have to sift this together five times. any lumps, I'm going to get rid of it. Can you not like crush them this time? Huh? The lumps. Can you not like crush them? Uh, you can try. I just usually get rid of them. Oh, okay. Okay, that was one. Pretty satisfying to watch. Okay, so someone could be doing this while it's the egg whites are beating. starch and the powdered sugar are blending together now before you could see the difference in the colors that was what three right almost there <laughs> that was being obvious. Log on and you know. I wouldn't have to go back to sleep. Oh, no. All right. This is our last <laughs> one. <laughs> it's, it's pre recorded. Pre recorded. Just yes. All right. Our last one. All right. So I got rid of all our lumps. Sorry, this just bothers me. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fold our dry ingredients in. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to put in. And that was our flavorings. You guys didn't, didn't you see these? Okay. Um, we're just going to, you guys would add it in at, when you um, start adding in your sugar, okay? but I can still get this in now. Uh, normally it takes vanilla and almond extract. Uh, I'm gonna leave the almond extract out 
because this is for tomorrow and I know someone can't have it. So, it takes one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. So that was a half. And I'm just gonna fold. So folding is taking the rubber scraper and bringing it up from the bottom and over. Okay, and you can rotate your hand and just cut into it and take it over. So that was a half. Because we're putting this in and we're gonna put this in gradually. Now, since I'm not gonna use the almond extract, which was half a teaspoon, I could actually make this two teaspoons if I wanted to. Uh, you could also add other flavorings in this, like a cream de mint. Uh, you could add raspberry, strawberry, any kind of liquid essence. Um, they have all kinds in the stores if you look. I know. I think he's been around since last week. Go! Okay, so that was one and a half. Okay, so I'm just bringing it down, around, and over. And I just keep changing my bowl position so that it's folding over. And just need one more to be for the almond extract. Okay, and notice it's not deflating because I'm going slowly. Okay, going down and bringing it up. All right. So now I'm going to have to start adding in my dry ingredients. And I'm also going to do this slowly. Because if I go fast, I'm going to deflate. Just bring it up and over. I could also add food coloring to this if I wanted to. I could add sprinkles. I could add, um, I don't know what you call those dark ones here. Do you call them jimmies? Hmm? Hmm? The dark sprinkles. The chocolate? Oh, chocolate. Yeah. What do you call them? Yeah. Chocolate sprinkles. Chocolate sprinkles. Okay. What do you call the colored ones? Sprinkles. The sprinkles. The sprinkles? Okay. Uh, different places call them different things. Where I grew up, the dark ones were called Jimmy's. Don't ask me why, I had no chocolate ones. And then the colored ones were called confetti. Oh, I should have yeah. oh, yeah. oh, You heard that one? Yeah, yeah. confetti okay. cake. <laughs> so you've heard of confetti cake, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, you could add, um, you know the little colored nonpareils too, that you put on top of cookies? Like the sugar? Yeah, those little hard balls type things. You could add those in if you wanted to. Uh, you could just do like a certain color if you wanted it, you know, for like a girl or a boy. Um, or you could do the colored ones. Okay, and can you see it's starting to get thicker? Yeah. And it is time consuming. So you guys are gonna have to be a little bit fast, okay? When you get in here and start mixing, uh, measuring things, okay? Wow. Okay, the nice thing is there's no cake pan prep. So you don't have to grease or flour anything. You do not have to cut any circles out. Uh, the reason is, is because this is egg whites and there's no fats, it needs to cling to the side of the pan so that it rises up because it's rising with um, the heat is creating uh, moisture in the cake. So it's going to help it leaven with the egg whites, the air bubbles that we created when we beat it. Just beat it. Uh, Cameron said he's waiting. He's Can you get Cameron in? Just add. I'll go up to Cameron's name and hit allow, all the way at the top. How long has he been waiting, Liam? Uh, he said like 15 minutes. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, really? I didn't see. Cameron, hi! 
Why didn't you text Liam earlier? Is he laughing? Cameron. I honestly did not see him there. Cameron, are you there? Cameron. Go down here. Why didn't you text Liam earlier? Because I didn't even know we had a Zoom. We didn't. I just sent out an email and said, hey, if you want to join, you don't have to watch the video then and uh, answer questions. If you join the Zoom, you can just, is it, hey, is it for just watch the while we're doing this and then no questions. Since we're watching this, do we have to do it tomorrow? Alright. So, how long have you been waiting? Uh, like three minutes, probably. Liam said 15. 15. <laughs> oh my God. Liam, do you know how to tell time? No. Three, fifteen, six. <laughs> three, fifteen, same thing. Okay, so I'm just going around. It's like whipped cream. It does almost look like whipped cream. It almost looks like a nougat that we put inside of different chocolates. It's like runny mashed potatoes. Oh yeah, it also looks like marshmallow, doesn't it? Okay, well this it started out life as a meringue. Harris, can you see it? Let me get close. Um, yeah, if you would please. Okay, I'm just looking to see if I left any dry ingredient pockets. Okay, you guys see it? Can you guys see it on the, through the, the video? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, so this looks pretty well done. Huh? Yeah. All right, what time do we leave? 25? Awesome. We're going to be all finished. All right. So what I got here is an angel food pan, a two pan. It's two pieces. Okay. It has legs that we can invert it. It also has a funnel so that the air can go up through the cake and help with that leavening. It also is helping with the crawling up, the clinging to the cake pan. Okay. As long as it's a snug fit, we don't need to do anything else. If it's not a snug fit, you have to line the bottom with like tin foil, okay, so that it doesn't come out of the bottom, okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to put it into the pan. And we're going to make sure that it goes all the way around. Because our flour is, I believe it's not bleached. Did you see how it was like brownish in color, like yes. a daisy color? Okay, once I incorporated that, it was no longer that bright white color that we started out with. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was because of our flour. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go around in the center, and I am going to get rid of and distri um, distribute some of the cake batter so that it's even around the cake. And it also helps release some extra big, huge pockets. Okay, and what I do is because this will bake on, I just make sure that I Clean up my pan before I put it in because you're going to have to scrub it and it's going to sit for a day. Alright, so this is going to pop in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. know that it is finished when it when I touch it um, and look at it if it is brown on the top and is it cracked on the top
top. We're looking for cracking. And I'll show you in a second as soon as I get this off the table. we're at three people. So you're telling me if I was in A group and I joined like with like two what? minutes. What? So you're telling me if I was in A group and I joined with like two minutes left, I still wouldn't have to do the questions? He's here. If I joined the Zoom, like two minutes. No, two minutes would not get you out of. When I took it out of the oven, unfortunately, I had the bright idea that I was going to bake it over there because that's where I was all morning and then run it over here and invert it onto a long neck bottle. Well, there was no long neck bottles in this room that fit the tube. So that didn't work, but it does have the legs to hold it um, upright. Unfortunately, when I was going over here, some of my air escaped and my cake deflated a little bit. So normally my angel food cakes come up to about here, and it was. And you can see it sort of deflated a little bit. But I was able to do this and it saved it. Okay, so it cracked a ring, and you can tell when you touch it that it's dry, and it's a golden brown color. What I need to do is, I am going to run a straight edge, straight edge around the perimeter okay I also need to release it from the bottom okay now I need to release it from here also So this would be done on day two because your cake will not be ready on day one. And then what I'm going to do is I am also going to release it from the bottom. All right, so now some people, they knock off the crumbs or they'll put a drizzle over it to hide the crumbs. I can leave it like that. Some people invert it and put the, the top back up like this, okay? I normally leave it this way. You could sprinkle powdered sugar over that. You could do the drizzle. You could do a frosting if you wanted to. You could also cut it in half and hollow out the center and put like a pudding or uh, cherries on it. There's also, if you make a cool whip and powdered sugar, you could cut it in half, put in a favorite pie filling with the layers of that cool whip mixture. And it's called, I think, an angel dream pie or something. Who's all gonna try it? All right. Can I actually put the powdered sugar on it? Uh, no. Yeah, you did. I'll put a little bit on it. Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, hold it for you. I won't put a lot in it. This time. Give them a spoon. Yeah. So bad. Come on. No. Did you see that? All the all that came out was powder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's it, guys. Thank you for joining. Bye. Um, yeah, bye. Can I stop the video? Oh, yes, you can stop, <laughs> you can stop the video.